Everyone's fed up with just the oil. This environmentalist activist group has grabbed headlines and raised hackles in the UK in recent years with a slew of cunning stunts. They've brought traffic to a standstill in London. They've thrown soup at priceless works of art. And most unforgivably, they've disrupted play at the snooker. All while sporting some of the most hilariously bourgeois names imaginable. Idrid, Indigo and co do all of this in the name of banning fossil fuels, they say. But what's stopping a bricklayer from going to his next job has to do with energy policy has been somewhat lost on the great British public. And now, even the great and good are starting to turn against these activists. A few years ago, Just Stop Oil, or its predecessor, Extinction Rebellion, won plaudits from a fawning media and political class. But now, even their patience seems to be running out. Even some former eco-allies have distanced themselves from JSO. Californian millionaire Trevor Nielsen once helped to bankroll the group. Now he says its tactics are performative and counterproductive. Even Swampy, the tunnel-digging eco-warrior of the 1990s, has distanced himself from JSO, telling the Sunday Times that he wouldn't engage in the same tactics. And when Swampy is telling you to calm down, you know you've lost the room. But here's the thing, we only ever talk about Just Stop Oil or Extinction Rebellion's tactics, it seems. And we need to stop doing that. Or at least we need to also start talking about what these people are saying. I'm here because I don't have a future. What they're advocating for. We need significant global transition away from an animal product-based diet and towards a plant-based diet. As well as what they're doing. We all agree, or the vast majority of people agree, that JSO's antics are infuriating and almost designed to turn ordinary people off their cause. But what is their cause? What do these activists really think? What sort of society do they want? The elites seem to take it as a given that these eco-warriors at least have their hearts in the right place, that they have the right idea, just the wrong tactics. You'd have to be a top tier tit to deny that climate change is the greatest problem we face. Well, I don't think know, any so, of us are know. in dispute about the problem. The manner in which you go about it is, a t is, is turning them away. And some people take different tactics, but I think for us it's just important that we just keep talking about it. Tennis star Andy Murray summed up this sentiment ahead of Wimbledon this year, which JSO threatened to disrupt and eventually did disrupt. I agree with the calls, he said just not always how they go about expressing it. But the more you look into it, the more you realise it is their cause, not how they go about expressing it, that is the real problem with this group. Their ideology is a hell of a lot weirder and a lot darker than many people realise. So, to those blissfully unaware, here is what Just Stop Oil really thinks and what it really wants. This is Roger Hallam, the alleged brain behind Just Stop Oil. Roger is, among other things, a failed organic farmer who blames the demise of his business on climate change. He was also a co-founder of Extinction Rebellion, the mothership from which Just Stop Oil and many other groups appeared. Extinction Rebellion have since distanced themselves from Roger following outrageous comments he made about the Holocaust in 2019. In an interview with a German newspaper, Hallam said the Holocaust was, quote, just another fuckery in human history, unquote, when stacked up alongside all the other bad things that have happened over time. He later said the comments were taken out of context, Still, they give you a bit of a flavour of the sort of quality of mind that we're dealing with here. That and Hallam's more than passing resemblance to one Charles Manson. Whatever else JSO is, it certainly is cultish. Ad hominems aside, let's talk about what he thinks. Roger Hallam isn't just concerned about climate change. He's hysterical about climate change. He's apocalyptic about climate change. It's a project of mass death imposed upon hundreds of millions of people, on tens of millions of people, of millions of innocent people, mass cannibalism, torture and death. That changes everything, doesn't it? That changes everything. He's fond of saying that six billion people, that is the vast majority of human beings, are going to die from the climate in the coming decades. But he's failed time and again to provide any evidence for this extraordinary claim. I'm still waiting for you to tell us if you've magicked up some evidence for your six billion claim that the vast majority of the people on this planet are going to be wiped out in short order as a relation to climate change. Have you found a peer review study for that yet? I'm trying to get to that point. Still, that hasn't stopped him offering up lurid visions of the sort of societal breakdown he thinks will soon be upon us.
get a load of this clip from one of his YouTube videos, cheerily titled, Advice to Young People as They Face Annihilation. What will happen is episodes where someone, a gang of young men, come into your house, they take your girlfriend, they take your mother, they put her onto the table, and they gang rape you, her in front of you. And then after that, they take a hot stick and they poke out your eyes and they blind you. That's the reality of the annihilation project that you face. So next time you see a Just Stop Oil activist glued or chained to something, wailing about how they don't have a future, remember that is the sort of nonsense that they're being fed. So what kind of alternative green future do these people envision? Not a great one, it turns out. It isn't some high-tech ecotopia in which we live lives even freer than we do now, only powered by windmills and sunshine rather than those nasty fossil fuels. Perhaps because deep down, JSO realise that so-called renewables are expensive, unreliable and incapable of keeping the lights on even at the moment. Instead, in an old blog post, Hallam sets out a vision for a society that is essentially semi-feudal, with crushingly low horizons for us all. Not only does he want to ban flying and cars, he also wants to end all non-essential consumption. He's called for a society, quote, similar to a COVID lockdown scenario, but with local people being able to meet, socialise, and be politically active, unquote. How generous. Is this really the cause that our green elites claim to support, even if they disagree with those tactics? Now, let's talk about the authoritarianism of JSO and the rage they seem to reserve for those who dare to question their gospel. Another one of his videos is titled Dominic Lawson will be hanged for climate crimes. In it, he stages a mock trial of Dominic Lawson, who is a Sunday Times columnist and a prominent climate skeptic. Hallam imagines this trial will take place for real at some point in the near future, where Lawson will be held to account for his alleged speech crimes against nature. At the start of this very long and very odd video, Hallam makes this disclaimer, lest he land himself in any legal trouble. A spoiler. I'm going to suggest that he's going to get hanged uh, maybe in 20 years. I'm going for that as a sociological prediction, okay? So if the Times is listening, don't panic, Times. It's a prediction, not what I want. What I want is on a good day, I'm going for lifetime imprisonment because I'm a Christian or former Christian and killing people isn't really my thing, just for the record. How reassure him? All this talk of hanging, sorry, imprisoning opponents explodes any claim that this lot might have had to being a democratic movement. For these eco-warriors, it seems, dissent is akin to heresy. Even at face value, the demands of these activists are, in a word, nuts. Just stop oil? We're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Energy costs have been soaring the world over. Ending our use of fossil fuels would crush the living standards of ordinary people, all to appease some apocalyptic art students. But my point here is that Just Stop Oil isn't just misguided, it's deeply reactionary. It's apocalyptic, authoritarian, anti-human. These people want a society in which we can do less, afford less, even say less. Those tactics we hear so much about aren't even the half of it. This isn't an environmentalist group, it's a doomsday cult. And their cause is one that no one who believes in humanity could possibly support.